It's a Chinese company now worth $18 billion that promises to revolutionize solar power. Hanergy, the world's largest solar company by market value, has grown at breakneck speed. Since the start of 2014, shares in its Hong Kong subsidiary have risen more than 300%. The FT's Miles Johnson and Lucy Hornby have looked at the numbers, as well as spoken to executives of the listed company in Hong Kong and the parent group in the past few weeks. Miles joins me in the studio now. Miles, what do you know about Hanergy? Can you explain its structure? I, I know it's working on thinner, lighter solar equipment, but can you tell us some of the basics? That's a very interesting question because until now, not many people really knew anything about Hanergy. This is a company, as you said, which um, has risen 300% in the last year or so and has grown to become now worth close to 19 billion. It's now, in the, in the words of one analyst, too big to ignore. And so it's only recently that people started to look at this structure. And this structure is, we can definitely say unconventional. This is a listed company that makes all of its sales to its parent. Its parent is the Hanergy Group, which is owned by Li Hejun, this uh, Chinese entrepreneur who is now ranked as the fifth richest man in his country. And that company, the parent company, has made this big bet into solar power. And to consummate that big bet, it needs this equipment from its subsidiary. But that's raised a lot of questions because it's buying a lot of this equipment from its subsidiary at very, very high markups. And that's what's enabled this subsidiary to become so profitable at a time when so many of its competitors are either struggling to make any money or have even gone out of business altogether. Frank Daiming Fung, the chief executive of the listed company and a vice president of the Hanergy Group, sat down with Lucy Hornby. We have him on tape. What about that, Miles? What about the internal nature of the business model? Yes, I mean, you know, as he admits himself, this is the thing that is really making people sort of suspicious, raising questions about the quality of this company's earnings. Because this is a situation where this company is basically reporting huge profit margins on selling this equipment, but it isn't actually being paid for the large bulk of the things which it's selling to the parent. And so there's this sort of circular nature where on, one, on the one hand, on just the sort of basic numbers, this looks like a miraculous company. This looks like a company which is really best in class. It's reporting 50% plus you know, net profit margins and is making a lot of money. And that is sort of what the management of the company say justifies this extremely sharp increase in its shares. But on the other hand, people inside the solar sector have long sort of been puzzled by the nature of where all of these panels are actually going to. And the company itself says that their factories in, in mainland China, which are using this equipment it's buying, aren't actually at capacity yet. Uh, Mr. Dai has said that specifically, that it's ramping up slowly, slowly. None of the nine factories, in fact, are in full production. We have him on tape talking about that, too. Miles, can you explain the strategy? How does that jibe with the revenues you've seen? I mean, this is sort of the million dollar question about Hanergy Group and Hanergy Thin Film, its subsidiary, is that in the end, if the group can start selling this thin film solar technology around the world at a cost efficient sort of profitable way where it can make lots of money from it, then everything will be fine. Then all of the bills to its subsidiary for the equipment can be paid and then, you know, the margins make sense, the bid starts to make sense. At the moment, that is still the future. That is a hope of the company. The company itself compares itself to a company such as Amazon, you know, one which doesn't necessarily make money right now, but shares of the company have done very, very well because investors believe that in the future it's going to have a dominant position in a market which is going to disrupt the whole of its sector. That is what Hanergy compares itself to now. So his analogy is sort of saying, you know, yes, we may be losing money now, but you know, in the future we will be making lots of it, so it's all okay. But at the moment, there are still big questions that hang over that. Thank you very much. Thank you.